let's explore our soul's journey. Welcome back. I'm Gila Ross, author of Living Beautifully, How to Bring Meaning, Joy and Love into Your Life Based on the Timeless Wisdom of Koke Avant and host of the Power Up podcast where we share real life ideas to upgrade and impact your everyday life. Thank you for joining us. We're starting a new series. And this series is called Our Soul's Journey. And what we're going to do over the next five weeks is kind of learn a little bit more about the soul, right? The journey of, of that our soul takes, you know, in this world, in the world to come, etc. What we're going to focus on today is what is our soul doing in this world? Right? Like why? Why why do we come down? Why do we come to this world at all? I want to start with the first disclaimer, right? And that is that Judaism teaches us that God is all-encompassing, all-powerful, all-knowing, right? And we are finite beings. And as such, we can't understand God, right? If we could, that would make God similar to us, right? But we can't understand God. But what we can do is we can try and get an understanding, a little bit of an understanding through the way God relates to the world. So that being said, I'm going to ask you a very easy question. <laughs> God, I said, is all, all powerful, right? Has no needs. Why bother creating the world? Why create human beings? That's the best questions. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he created it for, for mankind to give man opportunities to come close to God and to bring God into this world by doing okay. by doing this as a being and emulating God. All right. So that I mean that that's that that's beautiful and definitely um definitely we know that God um we're told that God gave created multiple op- mitzvahs, right? Why? Because God wants to give us multiple opportunities to gain reward and merit. What what's the purpose? And that let's try and drill down into so we can get clarity on on answering the question. What's the purpose of God giving us opportunities to do mitzvahs? For example, I'll, oh okay. yeah, to elevate our our existence here. Um, yeah, I feel like as we do mitzvahs, we're yeah. The word elevate just keeps coming to elevate our our. Um, to elevate our existence here, right? And what's the purpose of elevating our existence here? To elevate them. And what's the purpose of that? <laughs> I'm going to keep asking you until we get to we get to an answer. He want, God wants a relationship with us. So each time we do a mitzvah and each time we elevate ourselves, we're getting closer to Him. So we're having a relationship. And but that in, insinuates that God has needs. We got needs or wants a relationship with us. Is it is would it be lacking that. without that? So what wants I think isn't an an unreasonable thing to think that God has. God clearly has wants, like or desires for what he would like of humanity, or else he wouldn't have given us the Torah. Like this is the Torah is basically like, here's a list of the desires I have for you in order for you to become the best creation that you can be here you go like that definitely exists but needs is where it's like yeah i mean i think i think what you're saying is 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 first i'm glad you asked that question because i saved me asking (laughs) but um um and you're right right and when when i keep asking why is because i want to drill down to so we can get at real clarity on what it is and we actually there actually is an answer on this there's a book called dara hashem which literally means the way of God. And it tells us the answer of it. But what, Jessica, what you said is is correct, right? Hashem, for example, it says, right? Hashem desired to give merit to the Jewish people, right? Therefore, he gave us many mitzvahs, right? So we do, the Torah does talk about God's desire, right? I think the question, though, that you're you're hinting at or you're getting at is that, there has to be let, let's bring it back to me right 
I want a relationship with people, right? For example, let, let's just choose, um, um, I want a relationship with my child, right? Now there can be different reasons why a, a parent wants a relationship with a child or why uh, you want a relationship with a, with a friend, right? It could be you want a relation, as human beings, usually there's something that we get out of it, right? And I think that's the point where we need to kind of understand is that why does God want a relationship with us? With us? Because if God has no needs, it then God's not lonely. He's not, he doesn't need that relationship from us. And we as human beings, when we crave relationships with other people, we do have needs, right? We do need relationships with other people. God doesn't have that need. So why should God want a relationship with us? Why does God want us to do mitzvahs? Like if you think about it, right? God gives, God created the world and he gave us mitzvahs, right? So let's just say, for example, God created the world where some people are rich, some people are poor. And then he gave us the mitzvah to give charity. Wouldn't it be much more effective if mm. scrap that mitzvah and God just create everyone with enough money, with whatever, enough means to get everything they wanted? Wouldn't that be more effective? Why? Because it takes away the motivation to, to be kind or to give to the God. It takes away the growth for a person ah so there's something what you're saying is there's something in it um and and i think we discussed this once a few weeks ago but there's there's it's almost yes we discussed it in 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 the class just before pesach that it the what you're saying is the act of charity it's more for the person who's the giver than for the person who's poor right because god can give the person who's poor money in, in 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 many ways but the person who's rich can only develop that kindness and that giving through the act of charity or through the act of giving right so there's something in it for us so Dera Hashem says that um um why did God create the world God created the world in order to give people pleasure that's it right yes um, um um there's mitzvahs and there's elevation and there's all that but the basic basic level if we kept asking why why do we have these mitzvahs why do we have this why do we have that why does god want us to get married why it's because god wants to give us pleasure and god created the world in order to give us pleasure but not just any pleasure but the ultimate pleasure now what is the ultimate pleasure supposedly be close to god they say the ultimate pleasure is when you are truly connected with god okay so so um we're going to go um um through it in 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 a couple of different ways and what you're saying is that there's different levels of pleasure right we enjoy a good meal yeah food is pleasurable yeah. of course right food drink right physical pleasures the world is filled with them right is there anything that we would give up physical pleasures for yeah for example, um, just like we're talking about tzedakah and, and giving, so we may give up something physical for ourselves in order to help with our family. Or, yeah, and, and, and I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you a few examples. Right, you're about to sit down to a hot, delicious cup of coffee. Right, I enjoy my coffee. Yeah. Right, and the phone rings. A lot of us may answer the phone if it's a friend and speak to them even at the expense of getting out of the coffee going cold yeah. right um um you know we do that why because love relationship is a higher level of pre of of pleasure than the food right now what's important to understand is that we often confuse pleasure with comfort right yeah. um i think of this in my own life right so i'm a mom right um and hot cup of coffee it's been a while since I've drank, I drank a, a hot cup of coffee I remember like after I had my first baby I actually like learned to stop drinking coffee hot right why because I'll sit down to have a coffee or I'll sit down to have a thing and someone will say can I have a drink can I have that can I have that now in the moment when I'm being interrupted I may not feel the pleasure right and I may even feel like oh I don't want to do this because we Pleasure is not always what we feel in the moment, right? That's comfort, right? You sit down with a delicious bar of chocolate, a hot cup of coffee, that's the basic level of pleasure, and that's also comfort, right? 
but there are other things that give us pleasure that are higher level right and we give we give up for them right we give up for it or the you know love for example we give up um, 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 base lower levels of pleasure for love, right? Or relationships. You're going out with a good friend, and she's like, "Oh, I really, really, really want to go to this place," and you're like, "Oh, I would have loved to have gone to the other place." A lot of times, you'll say, "Fine, I'll go," because it's more important for me to be in this relationship with you than it is for me to have that. That's a higher level of pleasure, even if I don't necessarily feel it in the moment, right? Now, there are things that we would even give up that relationship for. What happens if you have a relationship with, with someone and the two of you have vastly, vastly different life values, right? Mm. Let's just say you have, um, I'll, I'll use I'll use um, um, current example, right? You have a friend, good friends, and all of a sudden you discover that they are vi vi violently pro-Palestinian to the point of being anti-Semitic. Right. And they won't keep quiet about it. Mm -hmm. Is that going to affect your relationship a little bit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. Right. Perhaps you can come to a place where the two of you agree not to talk about it, which, by the way, you're also affecting the relationship because then neither of you can show up as your authentic selves. Right. In a lot of situations, that relationship is just going to die. Right. Even in families. Right. We see this. People become religious and the families, you know, can't handle it. Right. Um, um, right. So and and we do give up relationships for a cause, right, for a higher thing. And, and not just sometimes it's not just relationships, but you'll give up time in a relationship for a higher cause. Right. You know. You'll someone a friend says, let's just hang out and there's an opportunity to do good. And you might say, look, I can't. I, I, I need to go and and and, you know, collect money for charity or whatever it is. Right. We give because that's a higher level of pleasure, right? Being involved in the cause is a higher level of pleasure, which, by the way, is this is not the topic of tonight's conversation, but it's just why why these causes are so popular, right? Pro-Palestinian causes. Why are they so popular? Because it feeds that pleasure drive, right? People love to feel like they are part of a, of a higher cause. The challenge that we have is is to make sure our pleasure comes from the correct source because every mm -hmm. every level every pleasure every level of pleasure we can get from the right source and we can get from the wrong source right mm -hmm. we can get pleasure from food and 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 drink and things in healthy ways and we can get them in unhealthy ways relationships as well we can get the pleasure in healthy ways and in unhealthy ways causes as well we can get the pleasure in healthy ways and in unhealthy ways there is a higher level of pleasure than than um, causes as well, right? Imagine if I were to tell you in my office, um, which is next door, I think it's next door, right? Um, God's there. And you can go and have a half hour audience with him. It's going to cost you a lot of money, but you could do that. With who? God. Oh. You can ask all your questions, get everything answered. That's a pretty high level. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, it might be intimidating. Um, and it's it's an incredible level, right? And really, that is the ultimate level of pleasure, right? So what is this ultimate pleasure that God wants to give us? He wants to give us that connection with the divine, right? We're going to talk about how we get how we get there, but there's another thing to to know about ultimate pleasure as well. Anyone here has ever gotten a gift? Mm -hmm. You won something in the in the in a raffle or something. How does it feel? Good, mm -hmm. fun, right? Mm -hmm. Exciting. Yeah. Anyone here has ever worked really hard for something? Mm -hmm. How does that feel when you get it? Much higher level of good. Much higher level of good, right? When when you know. When, when we work towards something and we achieve that and it's our own, we feel we, we it, that's a much higher level of pleasure, right? 
because we don't want to feel like we are the, we are at we, we're getting a handout right we want to we don't there's there's a little bit of shame sometimes there's a lot of shame right um um involved with getting a handout right everyone wants to feel like i earned this right this is kind of mine right and um so the ultimate pleasure has to be earned right now the thing to bear in mind is we said that pleasure right is a high high level of pleasure is that connection with divine now in the in the physical world if you want to bring something together what do you do you move them together right now in the spiritual world there is no space there is no time right so you can't bring something together by moving it together so how do you bring it together you bring things together by by becoming more like it right now if we think about god god is a creator right and we are always created people right so there's always going to be that di difference right because god is the creator and we are created so therefore god created us with the ability to also create right how do we create that by god did that and um, did that for us by putting us into a world where we have choices right we can choose to have a relationship with god we can choose to give money to charity right we can choose to use our words to help other people we can choose to keep kosher we can choose to celebrate pesach we can choose not to right but with every choice that we make we're doing a couple of things number one we are earning our reward right we are earning our pleasures and number two we are becoming co-creators in this world right so what what happens is that god created the world an imperfect world right and he created us human beings inside that world and he then invited us to become his co-creators in order to to so that we can we we, we can we can partner with god to create to help bring the world and ourselves at the same time closer to perfection any questions so far any thoughts any questions Because if he didn't do, well, I'm just thinking the converse. If he created everyone perfect and everyone's needs were met, there wouldn't be the need to grow or even have lots of relationships because you have everything you need already. Why do you need to like, you know, work or get charity or do all the mitzvah? So you have to make it imperfect so that in order for another, and also the people that, do need something especially when usually in most cases people don't even pray or want to have a connection with god till they're basically in the hospital or have a really bad thing going on in their life so you have to have usually that's how you start a lot of people start their relationship with god if you had everything you wouldn't need god okay. kind of. yes how are uh, souls created why is the uh, soul imperfect and needs um, to be liberated? Okay, so great. The, 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 oh, I mean, we are our souls just coming here and uh, getting to the next level. Yes. Okay, so, so it's 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 a, it's a really really great question, and we're going to go all the way back to creation to 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 try and understand this. Um, so God created Adam, right, the first man. And the Torah says he blew into him a soul, right? So Adam, um, Adam and all people are created of two parts, right? A physical body and a spiritual soul, right? Now, let me ask you the question or anyone, why does the soul need a body? To do something, get to... Because the soul can't be, it needs a container, right? It needs like a vessel to like operate through, you know, with the physical world. To interact with the physical world, because the soul, the soul, again, the soul comes from the spiritual world, right? And the spiritual world has no space and no time, uh, and, and yeah, no space and no time, right? Which means the soul can't do anything in the world, right? Why do we need a body? Why, why, why does the body need a soul? 
right? We know why we have, so now we sort of understand, and, and we'll talk a little bit when we talk about the two worlds that we have, um, we'll, we'll explain it a little bit more, but for now, why does the body, right? So the body, I have, we have a body so that we can do things, right? I can, I can smile at someone and I can use my words to, to, to help someone else, right? Right. I, I can do all these things with the parts of my body. Why does the body need a soul? Mm-hmm. But I can pray with my mouth. And animals interact with God and they don't have a soul. Or do that here? Well, they, they have the nephesh. They have the nephesh. Right. But they don't have a neshama. Right. So, you know, there's something about us and a neshama that makes us. Without the soul, you don't have that higher purpose. Like you're going to just be feeding the needs and desires of the body. And a lot of people do live that way because they're not like really caring. Or this is what body needs. Body so, needs to suffer you know, during the Pesach without food. <laughs> so, so, um, um, you, you're, you're both raising good points. And I, I want to actually say that if our body was left to its own devices, it wouldn't give itself what it needs. How do we see this, right? Our body needs healthy food. How many people in the first world countries struggle with, on some level, with maintaining eating nutritious foods? Mm. I would Mm. venture to say... 99% 99% of people, right? Like, yeah. come on. Like, I mean, I, I think it's anyone agree, disagree, right? We especially we live in, in in countries like America and the UK and Canada, where there's it's so much easier to eat food that are not necessarily nutritious than it is to to have nutritious food, right? Because what what is this struggle, right? Because our body at the end of the day has the capabilities, but all our body wants is to be comfortable right? Mm-hmm. To be comfortable. And again, it goes back to, to confusing comfort with pleasure, mm-hmm. right? We live in, we, we all, I think, do this. We, we confuse comfort with pleasure. There's a complete difference between comfort and pleasure, right? You can sit and eat a whole box of chocolate. Is that pleasure or is that comfort? That's comfort, mm-hmm. right? You get up from it. A lot of times you don't feel good, right? <laughs> you sit down and you enjoy a delicious, nutritious meal, right? That's pleasure, right? You walk away from it and, and it nourishes you, right? So we have to we have to keep in mind comfort versus pleasure, right? There's a place for comfort, right? But but what we what 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 we really want, right? And what our soul really wants is pleasure. Our body wants comfort, right? And without that soul, that spark, that divine spark within us that knows that we have the potential for greatness. It would just go to the lowest common denominator. It's kind of like those the two parts of us, right? Like the part of us that's like, you know what? I know I can. I, I know I, I should go to the class tonight. And the other part that's like, I'm just so tired. Yeah. Let me let me just sit on the couch, right? Right? A- anyone, anyone's <laughs> been in that situation? Yeah. Yes, we all are, right? What is that one? I know I should. That's your soul that's speaking. What's the... I just want that's your body speaking right and and the voice of the body generally is is um louder which is a whole nother discussion it became much louder after um, the sin of of Adam and Eve but generally it's it's you asked a great question why do we need a soul we need those two parts right because the soul on its own can do nothing right the soul has the drive it has the desire but drive and desire needs a vehicle in order to accomplish things, right? I can want to do a mitzvah. I can want to reach out to someone else. I can want to to pray, but I need a way to do that, right? I need to be able to, to use my mouth or my brain or something physical to be able to do that, right? And we're given a self driving vehicle that just wants to like consistently crash and cause issues. Like, does that make sense? So I, I would say, I, I, I would phrase it slightly differently. I would say we're given a vehicle and a driver, mm-hmm. right? And it's our job 
to make sure that the driver's driving the vehicle and not the engine, mm -hmm. right? Not and not and not the not the the car, right. right? We have to make sure the driver's in the car and not outside, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah, mm -hmm. if if there's no driver in the car, you know, you leave a car on um without um um without a driver in it, and it's it's not a good situation, mm -hmm. right? It's not a good situation at all, right? So. Um, I'm just remembering some, I, I watched the documentary from October 7th, um, which just came out um, Screams Before Silence. Mm -hmm. And there was a story in there that was just horrific that just um, flipped into my mind. But mm -hmm. back to where we are. So why do we need, um, why do we need the two worlds, right? Right, so, so okay, let, let's sum up where we are. Hashem created the world and created us in order to give us ultimate pleasure. Many different ways of getting pleasure, not to be confused with comfort, food, drink, relationships, causes, God, right? Connection with God, right? Connection with our higher self. All these, all these things are, are, are different levels of pleasure. The highest level of pleasure is that connection with divine, right? We would give up so much in order to do that, right? Um, to experience that. And the ultimate pleasure also has to be earned, right it had we want to show up and get that reward not and not be ashamed of it like i don't really belong here right if you've ever had one of those dreams where you're you're at a fancy dinner and and you're dressed in your casual clothes and you're like oh my gosh i'm like so embarrassed right that's not how we want to show up right for our for when it comes time to get the ultimate reward now we look around at this world and people ask the question like what do you mean right god created the world to give us pleasure like there's a lot of suffering in this world for the pleasure. What does it mean? So what we have to understand is we have to understand that God created two worlds. And those two worlds are hardwired completely differently. There is this world and there is the world to come. This is the world of becoming, right? This is the world of doing. The next world is the world of being, right? That's the world where we will enjoy the, the reward, right? This is the world where we earn the reward, and that's the world where we will enjoy the reward. Now, why did God have to create two separate worlds? Why does it have to be in, in you know, why couldn't we just receive rewards in this world? Why does it have to be in the next world? Let me ask you a question. As you said, that you earn something that feels better. Right, but why can't we get the reward in this world? It would be a lot easier to earn the reward if we saw. If I see the person across from me having done what they're supposed to do and, and the reward that they're getting, it's a lot easier. They're not making the choice anymore. Yeah. So it limits our free choice. choice. Yeah. Good point. And there's another another very powerful reason as well. Anyone here can think of a time where you worked really hard and you achieved something? Could be anything, a project. I don't know. You all got something in mind? Yeah. How did it feel when you um, achieved that thing? Tell me in, in words. First word that comes to mind. Amazing, accomplished. Amazing, accomplished. How long? Yeah. Yeah. Proud. How long does that feeling last? Approximately. Very long. Not very long, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I guess it depends on what the project is. It like maybe a few days, maybe a few hours, maybe a couple of weeks. It depends what it is, right? Um, um, you know, like even like, I think about writing my book and publishing it and it comes out and it's like great. And like within a few weeks or whatever, it's like, okay, what's next, right? Mm -hmm. Why does it have to be like that? You know, because that feeling of a, a accomplishment is a tiny taste of what we're going to get in the world to come, right? That feeling of, of earning our reward. Why does it have to disappear? What would happen? Because then you go on, you go on to like, okay, what is next? Exactly. You got the reward. You'd be like, cool, I'm done. Yeah. So we would I, achieve one thing in our life, and that's it, mm -hmm. right? So, so Hashem created Hashem had to create the world completely differently, hardwired differently. This is the world where we where we achieve, and we're we're wired to want to achieve, right? To want to move on to the next thing. Yes, we have to enjoy that moment of accomplishment, right? Because that's what gives us the motivation and the drive to do the next thing. But the natural feeling is that it will disappear, disappear, uh, disappear after a few 
after after a while, right? Because that drives us on to to the next the next world, right? So so um, there's two reasons why we have to have um, two separate worlds, right? As you said, if we would see God, right, clearly, if we would see the result of our actions clearly, we wouldn't have free will, right? It's not even that our free will would be limited; like we wouldn't have free will, especially when you study like the immense reward that we get for for the mitzvahs, right? For doing good things, right? If we would see that. We would never we it wouldn't we wouldn't have free will. And the second one is that because because if we if we had that reward right there, we would not have the drive to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Um, any questions? Any any questions? Okay, so we asked. Um, we're talking about like the two worlds, right? The body, the soul, the two worlds. And um, Pirkavot, I, I believe, says that it, it says. Actually, I'm not sure if it's from Pirkavot or from somewhere else, but um, it talks about it talks about the two worlds, and it says that um, um, you can't compare one hour right of of happiness in the world to come to all the happiness in this world, right? It what what does what what does it mean? It means that Rav Dessa actually explains what it means. He says if you take your happiest moment in your life, right? And then add on to that all your happy moments in your life and then condense it into one moment. Now take all the happy moments from everyone in this room, right? From their life and condense it into one happy moment. We're not done yet. Take all the happy moments from all the people in Denver, condense it into one happy moment. It's a pretty happy moment, right? Take all the happy moments from all the people in America, condense it into one moment, right? Take all the happy moments from all the people in the world, condense into one happy moment. Now take all the happy moments throughout history and condense it into one moment. That doesn't compare to the joy and pleasure a person will get in the world to come, right? So, so to understand why God created us and why God put us into this world, right? When we live in a world where we don't see that, but this is the truth of it, right? That if we would understand the pleasure and that that we get through doing the mitzvahs, right? We in this world we see just a tiny, tiny um, um taste of it, right? In the next world is where a person gets to experience that. So let me ask you a question: Which world is better, this world or the world to come? Did the angels say that the angels is tonight? Okay, this could be wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I was trying to remember exactly how it was said, but there's almost like a jealousy between the angels and humans. Like, like the angels are almost jealous of us because we have the opportunity to grow and to build that relationship where they don't, which would mean that this world is the, is the better place. Right, because th there is an, another statement in the Talmud which says you can't compare one hour in this world to the entire world to come why because in the this world the potential that we have is so great and in the world to come where we are just soul right we don't have that free will we can't do anything we can't accomplish anything there's an incredible story that's told um from the Vilna Gaon he was a a rabbi a genius that lived in Vilna interestingly enough, um, a couple hundred years ago. And he towards the end of it, he was a genius. He was a Torah scholar. He was a leader, like really a great, great person. And it was towards the end of his life and he's sick and his students know that he's going to pass away soon. And they're surrounding him and he starts to cry. And his students turn to him and they say, Rebbe, why are you crying? You know, you've spent your whole life studying Torah. You've spent your whole life uh, doing mitzvahs. You've done such an incredible thing. You've lived your life well, right? Why are you sad, right? You should be looking forward to going to the next world and enjoying the, the rewards of what you did. We'll, we'll talk about next week a little bit more about what it looks like in, in the world to come. But they, that's what they turned around to him and they said, and the the, the, the Vulnagon picks up his sitsis, right? His sitsit um, that he was wearing. And he picks it up and he says, 
you have to understand why I'm crying. I'm not crying because of with regret or whatever. He says he picks up his sisters and he says, I'm crying because in this world, for just a few pennies, I can buy eternity, right? For just a few pennies, I can wear this sitsit, put it on, wear it. And I'm earning eternity. And in the next world, for no F, for nothing at all, there's no way you could. I can't make any, I, I can't do anything, right? I can't um, um, build, I can't progress at mm. all, right? And that's why he was sad. He was sad because he was leaving this world where in this world, we have the potential. Sometimes we have to struggle with mitzvahs, right? Absolutely, sometimes we have to struggle with mitzvahs. And sometimes there are so many like easy mitzvahs that we can do, right? You you smile at someone, you know, you give $10 to charity. You, you say a prayer, right? An informal prayer. You're about to drink a cup and you make a blessing, right? Even if you say it in English, right? You don't know the Hebrew, you say it in English. Like there are so many simple ways that we can change ourselves, right? We can earn that reward. We can partner with God to bringing the, the world and ourselves closer to perfection. So the answer to the question, which world is greater, this world or the world to come? That world... The world to come is greater because that's where you get the reward. But this world is greater because this is the world where we have the potential to, to do so much good. And so often it's for such little effort. I'm not discounting the times where we have to put in a lot of effort. I think sometimes we, we fail to notice those the good things that we do with a, with a small amount of effort you know you reach out to someone and you ask them how they're doing right you say a prayer you 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 celebrate Shabbat on whatever level you do that right like all these things that we do they they might seem small and effortless to us but they are we're partnering with God and we're helping bring the world and ourselves closer to perfection thank you for spending your time listening. If you enjoyed this, you'll love my new book, Living Beautifully, which you can get now with the code AVOT25 for 25% off. I'll include the link and the coupon code in the show show notes. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen and please subscribe, share, rate and review the podcast to help us grow. Thank you.